We can hear you uh, just fine here. I mean, isn't it the same mic that's coming through Discord? So. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a different, maybe a different um, slider for OBS or try add audio source, maybe. Uh work okay i think that's working there um so hopefully they can hear us on the stream now we had a minor microphone issue let us know if that sounds okay joel if, when you get a second um where were we in our slideshow so we just covered the upcoming free classes so this is just a brief slide about wordcamp and script camp and all these different skill camp servers you can see we have a bunch of different ones you can join uh, some, some of them we haven't had classes in yet and they're still growing we're still finding instructors and topics for us to cover classes on, but we are all part of Skill Camp, which is a nonprofit that offers free and low cost classes to learn new skills and reach your life goals. Um, okay, uh, can somebody uh, tell me if the stream volume is working? Joel, does it sound okay? Using the built-in mic on OBS, we hear you, but it doesn't sound good. Um, so the blue snowball mic is just not wanting to connect and it's it's using my laptop's mic uh, i should just add a bullet point on this list has no idea how to work the microphone let me just leave this screen up for a second as i try to so when you add the source try selecting a different source maybe okay, okay wait I think, I think i got it how about i think that yeah I, I should have sound on the nice quality microphone now somebody can confirm that for me in a second Again, sorry about that, guys. OK, um, so Joel will let me know about that. But here's an overview of the upcoming boot camps. We have Pilot, six weeks, starting July 16th. So that one has already um, hit, wait, is it past the 16th now? Yeah, that one already got started. But we're um, that will be on Sundays, 10 to noon. Novel boot camp will start in August. That will be Saturdays, 12 to 2. And then this feature boot camp in this current slot is Friday, 6 to 8. And that's going to be starting now. So next eight weeks will be writing your whole script. OK, I'm told the sound now sounds OK on uh, the stream. Sorry, stream people. All right, let's uh, keep going. Membership details. Remember to get unlimited subscription if you want to keep just attending as many classes as you want on any Skill Camp server. This comes with over 100 hours of different events every month. We are having a little trouble with the video library right now. We should just let you guys know, as we, we just have a brand new version of our website just rolled out. So let us kind of work that up for a minute. But once that's fixed, then you'll have access to recordings of every previous class. And on our YouTube channel, even now, you can find tons and tons of recordings of previous classes. Um, so this also comes with things like proofreads, consultations. You get big discounts on these. And you also get script coins, which you can use to get table reads, where everyone gathers together, reads your script, and gives you feedback. Yearly subscription is just $19 a month. So we are at week one of this course. We are on uh, one of eight. So your first draft is intended to be finished by September 15th. If you follow all the steps, it's OK if you fall behind or if you don't make certain deadlines or things like this. There's no grades, and you're not going to be kicked out of the course for not uh, hitting a deadline. But I would approach this with this kind of boot camp mentality where you're like, it doesn't matter if the pages are good or not. I have to just hit the gym and put the reps in and get those pages down every single week. Um, not worrying about quality. We're trying to push past this prohibitive perfectionism that so many people get caught in. Um, and trying to make sure you finish script after script after script. Because the three things you need to really be doing are reading, professional work, writing as well as you can, and f moving on. This third skill of moving on means ideally you're moving on when you have finished projects. But even if you have not finished them, you will find that time where you have realized that you've done all that you can and you move on to the next thing because you need to write thing after thing after thing and turn yourself into this kind of machine that is entirely tuned towards producing script after script. You must become a script generator, a script machine. So we're not trying to pick masterpieces or things that you've been working on for a very long time, ideally. 
Don't try to pick something that you'll dishonor your family legacy by getting wrong, or you'll not do the justice to someone's life story, or some really important, heavy, weighty, imp like, vital event in history. You should pick something that keeps you excited and interested for the eight weeks of the class, and then you will have an easy time sort of moving on, whether or not you did a fantastic job. Okay, so we're on week one, log line and sketchbooks, so we'll be starting sketchbooks right after we finish with this slide. If you have not already started yours, then you will be starting that now. And you, sh you should just be having the sketchbook open, working on that constantly throughout pretty much every class. I would always have it open in another tab so you can be working out problems, writing down questions, and figuring out what exactly you are trying to make and trying to whittle down at this, you know, the idea starting as this really big blob of amorphous things that, like, possibilities. You're trying to sort of whittle and cut away at it until you reduce everything, take away everything that the movie isn't, and you really zero down onto a, a clear and and high concept premise that feels engaging in its own right. It's one single sentence that's going to express what is this movie about, who would maybe want to go see this, and what kind of fun can we expect to have here. That's what the logline is. Next week, we're looking at breaking the story. So that's structure, structure, and that's going to be story beat summary, is what we're going to try to be finishing by the end of that week, which is a list of all the major scenes in your story. It doesn't have to be absolutely everything, and they don't have to be perfect, but the story beats outline are going to be those major events in roughly the order that you want them to happen in. And they're going to be filed away under those proper structural headings to prove that you sort of have placed them at the right moments, and you know exactly what the effect of those dramatic moments is going to be. Following that, you move into Scene Cards. Scene Cards is an expansion of the Story Beats outline. It's a full paragraph of text for every scene that expresses essentially who is this about, what are they trying to do, how, what tactics do they use to try to get that goal, what is the result, and how do we transition into the next moment from there. And that is going to build you a really solid mo roadmap of what the entire movie is going to look like, and you're going to flesh out essentially what happens on every single page before we start. We start on week four beginnings that's august 11th when you're going to go to pages meaning you actually move from pre-writing and outlining into the pages themselves so you don't need to download screenwriting software of any kind until we get to that week but from august 11th you're going to be writing about 20 to 25 pages a week so i would set a pace for yourself of maybe four or five pages every weekday you can settle for a little less than that you can if you only get two or three done on some day that's okay but try to be writing a little bit at least every weekday to try to keep up with those deadlines and finish the movie then in four solid weeks of writing. We promise it goes much easier once you actually have nailed down what happens on every page. And the more you solve this battle of what needs to happen and how exactly does it happen, the more comprehensively that you solve that problem, the more um, you have addressed the the main cause of what pe stops people's momentum, which is just, I don't know what needs to happen next, or I don't know how to connect what happens next to the rest of the story. And that just kills your drive to finish. And it, what's, what's, what, it's what leads to people abandoning projects. So if you've never tried this really organized, fastidious, methodical approach before, I highly recommend you give it a shot and you can change it as you go and modify this process and find what works for you. But this is a class where your your goal is to sort of learn how you organize and learn how to get organized and to start conceiving of these very long story documents. 100, 100 plus pages, you know, 90 to 100 pages is not exactly an easy thing to keep coherent and engaging and interesting in every single scene on every page, giving us a reason to keep reading and to keep going. But your goal is to try to not produce perfect versions of that, but to organize yourself so that eventually you will be able to get better and better at this. And by completing project after project, you will build those skills necessary to become, again, not the person that has written the perfect thing, but the generator of unlimited scripts. Okay, so that was a lot of words I just said. Uh, we should, um, let's start. Let me just go to our sketchbook slide before we look at the overview of this class. So let's just open up um, Google Drive and just make your sketchbook now. If you have not already, if you have, I would open it. And if you haven't filled these things out, then you should put at the very top, we have title, genre, logline, and comps. Title, genre, logline, comps. Um, I think we know what the basics of these are. Title, if you don't have a title yet, you can put working, untitled, unknown, whatever. Genre, you should try to pick two things. Don't mash 100 things together and pretend like we're going to know what that is. Don't combine more than two, just, you know, pick one as the sort of basis, and then one is to sort of clarify the tone. If it's like a horror comedy, we don't need to add in a bunch of other genres. Just because it has dramatic moments doesn't mean it's a horror comedy drama, you know what I mean? So try to pick two things and reduce it as much as possible just to those. 
We have logline, which is that one sentence expression of what your story is about. And we will go over more of how to specifically format and think of these today. So if you have some early idea of what it might be, you can write that down. Then we have comps, which are comparing your movie to others. In this way, you're clarifying what your objectives are in writing this. So for instance, there's comedies that come of many, many different tones and shades and varieties, but you can help clue us into what you specifically are trying to do if you tell us which comedies yours is trying to be like. You know, we have a, a like a Mel Brooks kind of comedy. If you pick like a Mel Brooks comedy and a Leslie Nielsen style comedy, people are going to expect a very broad kind of wacky tone. Whereas if you're picking something more like an Alexander Payne movie, like, you know, Sideways or something like that, like a more low key, uh, more kind of deadpan comedy, people are going to expect something else. So it's to help set people's expectations properly and to tell us what your intentions are for that piece. So we will get more into all these separate things later. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We are, we're going to look at overview of the entire class right now. So we'll start with introductions where we'll just ask, who are you? What are your goals? What would you like to accomplish? What are you trying to write? What are any ideas that you have or any writers you want to be like or anything like this? Anything you're curious about or objectives of what you want to learn specifically? And we can go into ground rules and suggestions on how to choose your idea, just the sort of idea you should be choosing. We have logline basics after that, and we are going to pretty soon into the class. Um, I'm going to say like just before the hour mark or right around the hour mark, I'm going to ask to share our log lines. And because there's a bunch of people here, we'll get through as, as many as we can. I can't guarantee we'll get to absolutely everyone, but we'll try to give feedback on every log line that you guys share to get it into shape by the end of class today so that you're ready to start on your further development of this script during this upcoming week. Um, what else? So we'll have that feedback. We'll look at a little bit about premise. How do we choose a premise and what is a premise and why are, specifically are you choosing this story to tell? High concept versus execution dependent, which is sort of this continuum of how we package ideas and how you kind of have to incorporate um, this almost, it's, it's almost like you're coming up with how you might market the movie right off the bat. Just a, a very quippy way to describe it is helpful at the very start because if you have a very simple way to describe it, that means that the story is simple enough to be understood um, in just a couple words or just one single sentence. That's kind of at the basis of this idea of high concept is that you want to be able to very simply and clearly communicate what this is, what kind of fun the audience would be having in this one story, and what is the kind of inherent hook? What's the irony here? What is the thing that we are latching onto that says this promises to be an engaging, entertaining situation? Um, sketchbook, we won't go way too into how to fill it out, so I think I'll just address that right after we do introductions. Um, we will have time towards the end to post revised log lines, and we'll try to get everyone as complete as you can on the log line. So that's a lot of what we're going to be doing today is log line work. <clears throat> so I would just have that ready to share. And again, apologies if we cannot get to you. We are going to try to get to as many as we can, but there's just um, more than 15, what is it, 15 people in the room. Okay, um, so uh, it looks like some folks might be having some technical problems seeing the stream. That is that might be due to yeah your connection quality you may need to just disconnect and reconnect to the room it might work you can let us know in the chat if you're still having trouble with that also let me just link the slideshow in the chat with you guys so you can follow along on the slideshow itself if you're not able to use the video here you go okay we are currently on slide uh, nine moving on to slide 10. So slide 10, let's go into discussion portion so you can tell us about yourself now. Feel free to introduce yourself, speak up, raise a hand, or use the text to tell us who are you, what are you trying to learn, what are you trying to write, what are your specific objectives, um, have you written scripts before, and if not, is if, if this is um, something you're excited about, nervous about, feel free to share whatever you want, tell us something exciting you've read lately, or just feel free to share. Let me call on Joel. Go ahead, Joel. I'm Joel, and I have never actually finished a screenplay before, despite me um, sort of doing it as a hobby on and off for a couple of years. Um, this is a rule. Can you hear me now? Yep, we hear you. Okay, cool. Uh, my mic has a 
habit of continually changing in volume. Um, yeah, so... Um, for various reasons. But uh, this is a feature that I want to write. Um, oh, wait, what did, no, that wasn't what you asked. <laughs> yeah, so I've started writing a couple of stories. I've got a bunch of stories on my mind already. Um, but yeah, not actually finished any. And I think I've read two or three prose scripts, not many. Okay, great. Well, thanks for sharing. Hopefully we can finish your first script in this class. You can get that extra boost that you need, keep the momentum up, and get all the way through to the finish and re start reading a lot more too. Um, of course, super important. And I think that the more scripts you read, the more you will be motivated to finish more and to finish project after project and just get better and better. So thanks so much for joining. All right, let's ask uh, Dakota. Go ahead, um, Dakota. Wait, was that who requested to speak? There we go. Hello. 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 Hi. Um, my name is Dakota, and I have been, gosh, how long has it been? Wow. Ten years. Ten years this month. I have been <laughs> writing scripts that long already. Wow. <laughs> I have uh, done several uh, features and several shorts. I've mostly been on the production side of things um, in terms of the film industry. I've done basically everything. <laughs> um, but in terms of the writing part, um, I've written at least one feature and several shorts. I have read, gosh, Billy Wilder, um, uh, Mank, uh, you know, all of the 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 classic, uh, you know, the the, the, the guys that people know, the, like, or, or the people that everybody should study, um, you know, uh, Mankiewicz, um, the, the guy that wrote uh, The uh, Sweet Smell of Success, um, you know, The Apartment, uh, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, uh, Singing in the Rain, The Big Chill, um, a lot of dialogue-heavy and um, action-heavy scripts who frame Roger Rabbit. Um, the Dark Knight, um, Ratatouille, uh, you know, Fantastic Mr. Fox. I've read a lot. <laughs> I've read a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, and um, I'm really excited because I haven't tackled uh, script writing in a new way in a long time. I've read the, you know, the Hollywood Standard second edition, Christopher Riley. Um, a lot like I've basically memorized that at this point um, so I have a lot of the the knowledge there but in terms of uh, like structuring it in a very specific way haven't done that in a long time uh, outlining is completely it, it's not something that I personally have done really um, and I don't really know anybody that really does <laughs> any any really um we, we didn't really go through that um to be honest uh in, in in film school it just wasn't something that happened uh so um it'll be cool to, and, and very interesting to go through a more structured regimented way of doing it super excited uh can't wait to learn and uh it's gonna be fun i'm really excited about this thanks so much dakota yep hope hope you can even if not everything in the process or any one structure is exactly to your liking or works perfectly for you, hopefully you can adjust and modify it and just find your own sort of process, your own way to finish things and to um, finish the next thing and the next thing. Thanks for sharing. We have a few more hands raised coming up when I invite you. Welcome. Hey there. Um, my name is Carlos. I've... Uh writing for a few years on and off um and uh yeah I, you know i've written uh, like a decent amount a couple screenplays um a couple pilots and are <clears throat> excuse me a couple features i mean and um as far as goals my big thing is just what i'm sure a lot of people are hoping for here is but just to write consistently um and just like to be able to pump out stuff you know um both like schedule things and uh personal like 
you know, personal commitments, all that kind of stuff gets in the way of it. So I'm hoping that uh, this will give me a chance to like have a more focused kind of like goal oriented approach. Um, I've read a handful of proscripts and like, you know, every time it's super inspiring and really exciting. So I want to get to a point where, you know, I, whether or not they're of good quality, I'm actually writing enough scripts that I can start to genuinely compare uh, the stuff I'm doing to professionals, to other people here and anything else. Cause right now it's just not nearly enough, but I am really, really excited for this and keep my fingers crossed. Thank you so much for sharing. Yep, you got to sometimes, even if it takes waking up an extra hour early or staying up an extra hour late at night, um, people find all kinds of creative ways to find the time to get those pages done during the day. It's not that you absolutely have to do those things, but sometimes when you have enough going on in your life, you have to make certain concessions in order to find just that time for those few pages. But the more you do it, the better you will get at it. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much. Uh, let's do two more hands raised. Go ahead, Lala. Uh, hello, guys. Sorry for one of you, but uh, I got to introduce myself. Well, I'm Lalo Eduardo. Uh, I'm just a Venezuelan guy, so I, I'm not like in the same sphere that you are with the VGA and all that stuff, but my writing goals are simple. Um, I want to finish, I want to test the idea of how to make a picture, how to write something, uh, how to understand this this world and enjoy it. Uh, I, I've read it before, of course. I try, I try to write like short, play, short uh, film, just uh, to English to send you some feedback. And I read pro scripts like once to once uh, once a month or, or like uh, so, uh, that's something where I don't know how to say it I need to watch the film many times and then read the read the screenplay to be completely comfortable uh, reading the dialogues and reading all to enjoy it or finishing great okay thank you so much for sharing I recommend trying to read three scripts a week if that's too much, or if, especially if you're reading them in a second language, maybe one script a week is, would be a bit more uh, reasonable. Um, but I'm sure you'll find lots of things to enjoy. Oh, but, uh, I came here to, uh, to improve that, and I love the, the feedback. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are also at, I think we just added international feedback channel. So if you are writing in another language, especially, I think we do have the most Spanish speakers on the server of any other language, but we have other ones too. Um, we have a channel just for sharing that work and getting feedback on if, if, there's a, if you, you're more comfortable writing in your own language and would prefer to get feedback on that. Um, we can do that now, so check that out. Links are in the chat. Thank you, Nacho. Um, let's see, uh, Chikira. Hey, Chikira, your mic is on uh, mute still. You'll just have to unmute that. Uh, sorry about that. My name is Chikira. I'm currently at the uh, fundraiser, but I am interested in more creative writing. Um, and my writing goals are to figure out a structure um, for, for screenwriting. I know it's different from just a, simply a short story. So trying to learn that and also learn all the pieces of, of dialogue and, um, and action um, and the specific like, you know, drama. Um, and I, I've written one before, but this is basically I'm a newbie and I haven't read many proscripts, it's probably one. So just try to make sure like I'm doing all the studying as well as writing. Um, so thank you all. Thank you. Any favorite filmmaker uh, or writers that you enjoy? I do. I do enjoy Ava DuVernay. Nice. Is, you know, yeah. Very cool. Okay. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, this yeah. is um, a... Uh, the... Um, uh, a good time for everybody while you're listening to these introductions to just be working your sketchbooks and working on these early versions of your log lines, just so everybody knows. 
Looks like we have one more hand raised from Terry. Hey, Terry, go ahead. Hey there, sorry about that, I was on mute. Um, yeah, so I have completed a feature script in the past as well as a TV pilot, and now I'm looking, I'm undecided at the moment, but I'm either going to pursue a brand new feature script or look to revise my previous one. Awesome, great. And um, so you are writing, were you the one that was writing the script about the bug people? Or there, there's like a, an animated story about bugs? Was that you? Yeah, so I had a butterfly feature um, I was working on last year. And I think the next one, that, was, that will probably be the one I want to revise. But I also am ambitious on getting that um, ad uh, adapted story um, off the ground as well. Nice. Oh, yeah, we talked about adaptation stories uh, just the other week. Thank you for sharing, Terry. All right. So a um, couple things. One, if um, a bunch of people... So, yeah, a bunch of folks mentioned here they've read some pro scripts before. Um, we got to get those rookie numbers up, and your goal is to start reading at minimum one pro script every week. We have lots of resources for you to find them. The best is what's called the blacklist. We have a link if you just type exclamation point blacklist in the chat as a macro, then you can find uh, a way to navigate to that. And you will be able to read lots of pro scripts that are going to give you a really good sense of what you're trying to create here. Most people don't grow up reading scripts. Most people don't read these day to day. It's not a hobby for most people. so. Um, it, you're never really going to learn the conventions and learn what's been done before and learn how certain things are done and how many pages they require and how to pull certain things off unless you do get really experienced at reading and analyzing these things. Um, so there's really no way around this and uh, you can you can just try to read a couple of pages a day if you can, whatever it takes, but I would try to break it up so you're reading at least one script every single week. Take notes on the pages if you want. Maybe in your uh, PDF reader, just write down when different structural beats occur. That's a great way to just practice structure is to identify these structural moments in other people's scripts. And you're not going to like absolutely everything, but maybe try just re opening up five of them that sound kind of interesting based on the log lines in the guide documents. Just read the first few pages and just pick one or two to finish all the way through to the end. Try your best to really finish them. Pay attention. Read very actively. Um, we will ask... During the boot camp, what have you been reading? What have you liked? What have you enjoyed? What have you noticed or learned? You don't have to, there's, like, there's not right or wrong answers. It's not a test. We're just going to ask, what have you been reading? Also, just get used to sharing your ideas at early stages with fellow students and with me, just because it is going to be, a lot of writers are kind of shy about sharing work at the early stages, but it's the only way to get that feedback that will help the shaping of the much greater idea, because if you if we this is this is why we start with the smaller seed of things like the log line and then just the sketchbook and we're expanding out from there so then, then when you're getting feedback uh, feedback on every step of that process starting with the smallest thing then moving up then we're avoiding having to get those huge notes once you've turned in the final thing that's like huge parts of this just don't work um so it's actually useful to get notes on early versions of ideas and water them and continue to let them grow or however you want to think of it. And especially if you'd like to work in collaborative settings like with co-writers or in TV writing, you absolutely have to just be good at collaborating, compromising, taking notes, applying revisions. You're not ever going to be required to take notes that I give you in the class. I'm just trying my best to help you learn how to do this better. But this is a good time to practice receiving and working with notes. Um, and thinking of that as a skill to improve just as much as writing is a skill. But the processing and the application of feedback is really essential to be working on and practicing too. Um, we'd like you to use your real name if you're going to continue past just this first opening free week. You don't have to do this now, but if you come, if you want to come back for next week, if you're going to sign up, then make sure to just uh, either change your nickname or let us know um, so you're not called, you know, Hello Kitty. 420, whatever it is, we can use your real name or you can use a nickname or something if you would really like to. Okay, um, how about the ground rules? So you want to choose a brand new idea 
or a major page one rewrite of something from before, but you don't want to pick some anything that is going to impede your ability to finish this project in eight weeks. And that's why almost all these rules are tuned to that specific problem of, of, of trying to clear the obstructions, which would make a project take longer than just this eight weeks to write. The biggest one is going to be just this sort of perfection that comes from trying to adapt some source material that's really close to you or something that you really like. Something that's really important to you and that you just feel the need to get just right is going to cost you time in getting those things right. The more research that you have to do, it's going to add extra time at the beginning. So you probably want to avoid true stories and adaptations and historical scripts, unless you were already an expert in that era. You just don't want to write time travel, just believe me. We've never once seen someone complete a time travel script in the boot camp. It's really difficult. And beware of other kind of tricky sci-fi conceits like things like clones and parallel universes and stories that involve really complicated flashback structures like a Gillian Flynn mystery that has like a bunch of different narrator characters at different points in time. Things like this are really tricky to pull off. Ensemble stories, really difficult to balance. So try to just pick the most straightforward, simple thing that you can that will keep you interested and excited for eight weeks. We have a question from Paul. Should all our drafts be page one rewrites until the dialogue passes? No, they don't really need to be. Um, I find it useful to start with a blank page at the st when you're doing a brand new draft, but then you can copy and paste in scenes from your previous draft as needed. I just don't try not to let that be the default thing option that you go for. So you can think of that as a page one rewrite, but I don't really consider it to be a page one unless substantial changes are made to the outline and then you start from scratch. Looks like we have a couple other questions that I'll try to address before continuing in the slides. Um, is it acceptable if a script is based on an existing media but takes very loose inspiration and a lot of liberties with the characters, doesn't set up or continue from anything, and does not adapt any story arc specifically? I mean, yeah, that would be fine. We're just trying to really limit things that would add extra time in the writing of a script in this condensed time frame of eight weeks. If you feel that that would not significantly expand that time frame for you, then go for it. I'm not exactly sure what you're trying to do, but it seems like you, you know what you're doing, so if you think you can do it, give it a shot. We have a question from Carmen. What is a page one rewrite? That is when you start from page one and make really substantial changes so much so that it's basically a whole new story. You're um, kind of scrapping everything and starting over. Um, I, like I mentioned in reference to a comment a moment ago, I usually don't consider it a page one unless we're making big changes to the outline and then starting over from scratch without copying and pasting in very many scenes from your previous version. Okay, um, what else? Let's uh, finish this advice by just summing this up and saying pick some funny, weird concept, take a big swing, something that is, is not going to be like absolutely impossible for you to pull off, but just something that grabs your attention and holds it and you just think is amusing. Um, and you're just going to be working on building up these fundamental skills more so than you're trying to write a masterpiece. So don't put the pressure on yourself to come up with something that will be amazing on your very, very first try because almost no one's first work of art in a brand new medium is amazing on their very first try. You'd have to be, you know, a absolute virtuoso for that to happen. And it just doesn't really happen in this one, in this medium. There's a lot of really technical rules in this medium and a lot of kind of just conventions and things that you have to learn and you can learn so much academically, but then you'll learn even more from just reading scripts and just seeing what's out there and what's been done before and what has worked. So there's a good amount of research that you have to do just to get the sense of what's possible and what does really good work look like and feel like on the page. Um, but don't put that pressure on yourself right now. Your goal right now is to write a draft in eight weeks. Will the draft be good? No, almost certainly not. It's the first draft and beyond that, no script has to be really good and your, your goal is not to unearth a treasure chest full of gold. It's to run the laps and improve that and become that generator of unlimited scripts. So um, hopefully we've had our sketchbooks open and you guys have been getting ready and working on these log lines. If you haven't opened your sketchbook and started on this yet, I would definitely do that now. In about 20 minutes, we're gonna share log lines, but I'm gonna briefly talk about what should go into a log line, how to make it as good as it can be and what to be paying attention to here. Um, so let me uh, move right into just the explanation of what log lines are. So this is the central conflict of that movie distilled down to just one single sentence. It, I've seen some successful log lines at two sentences long, but almost always if there's a two sentence log line, the first question you will get is 
why is this not one sentence? So most of the time, you can make it one sentence. Um, we want to imply visual action and what the sense of what we're going to be watching your characters do and carry out on screen. What is standing in these characters' way? Like, what is the character's goal? What are they trying to accomplish and how do they go about it? What sort of obstacles are going to get in their way? And what kind of fun can we watch in watching your character struggle with those obstacles and attempting to reach that goal? What happens if they fail or what is the ticking clock or the thing that is adding urgency and, and motivation and stakes to our character's goals? And then uh, last, we may want to have some sort of sense of what is the boundaries or walls or inhibitions around this story. So we might say it takes place all over the course of one night or this takes place all within this one guy's life, or this takes place all within one year. If there's some kind of frame to the story, it could be nice to have something like that in the logline too. So here's the templates. When or after inciting incident, also known as the catalyst, completely interchangeably I'll say inciting incident or catalyst. An adjective protagonist must conflict before stakes. An adjective protagonist. So each of these fields has to be chosen pretty carefully. You don't always, always have to use exactly this formula. But if you don't know where to start, then these are just the major questions that we're going to want answers to. Questions like, what gets the story going? Is the question of the catalyst. Questions like, who is this about? And how are they going to change? Is implied to us by your choosing the adjective for your character. Because often the adjective you choose will tell us who are they at the start of the story. If this is going to be about a miserly old man... When he's visited by three ghosts, you know, th then that, that tells us who your character starts the story as. And it gives us the suggestion of how they might change or what trait of theirs is going to be challenged as the story goes forward. So it might be some unique limitation of theirs or thing they're struggling with, or it could be a particular talent of theirs. Some way that they use to solve their problems, some tactic, something that makes them unique, something that sets this apart and suggests what that internal journey might sort of be. Um, so you're picking your description of your main character in such a way to tie them to the events of this narrative and make it clear why it's about this person specifically. We're not going to settle for just like a guy. A lady has to do this. Um, when she wins the lottery, a lady must decide what she's going to spend the money on. Oh, there's a million things wrong with that story idea. To begin with, must decide something is kind of an internal process. We want to avoid framing your movie in purely internal terms. It shouldn't feel like it should be a conflict that can be resolved by your character just thinking about stuff or usually by just talking about stuff or discussing stuff. There's the occasional exception to that, like courtroom dramas are kind of a highly dramatic situation which are resolved by characters talking about stuff. But in most cases, just discussing things or talking about things or make, must choose between this and this, that's actually the subtext of your story that needs to be illustrated by your character's actions and the goals and the challenge, you know, the challenges they face and the goals that they attempt to pursue. So if it's something like my character must choose between um, his old life and uh, in the big city and his new life in the small town, well, that's what he, that's the subtext of the journey. Yes, that's like the basis of the internal journey, but you have to tell us what is the external journey. Oh, a guy from the big city goes to a small town where he meets the old sweetheart from his childhood, right? Except he's got a fiance back from the city. Okay, now we can see what the story is going to be. He's going on dates with both of them or whatever. He's getting, you know, balancing this relationship with both of them. He needs to choose which one of them. That's like the finale of that story. But don't tell us that story is just a character needs to decide or choose something. You need to give us that sense of what we're watching people do. That's why this is a visual medium. And we say movies are about people doing stuff. Books can be much more about ideas. And plays can be much more centralized around people talking in these conversations or, you know, this very non-dramatic word, discussions, right? Um, but movies are fundamentally about people doing stuff. And so we should not be in doubt as to what we're actually watching your character pursue physically in the world on the screen after reading your logline. Okay, hope that's clear on just the basics of loglines. I want to take see if we have any questions before I go more into specifics of what makes loglines really work well. Any questions just on the essentials? And don't you don't have to share your don't share your logline yet. We'll post those in about fifteen minutes. But I will take questions on these principles. If you're watching on a different site like YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, or Discord, we should still be able to see your.
questions and comments, though sometimes it does take an extra minute to do so. But if you are watching on those other places, you should come join us on Discord, which you can find the link to by going to our website, which is going to be scriptcamp.net. You can get that Discord link right up there in the top right. Okay, seems like we don't have any questions so far. So we're going to move into some more specifics of log lines. And as we are working on this, you guys should still just be developing your log lines on your page. Whether or not it's going to be perfect by the time you share it, just don't expect it to be perfect. Expect to get notes and revisions on it, whatever it is. You should always be anticipating that. Let's look at some more specifics here before we get into sharing the log lines. So. One, we want stories where the stakes are very clear and they are as high as they can be for your genre. Movies are almost always going to be about the most important events in your characters' lives thus far. Um, we sometimes end with the sense that, okay, they're going to have way more or way bigger adventures after this, or maybe this is even the start of, like, is their origin story sort of thing, where if that's the case, maybe this is just one of many adventures. But at, at least this is the most important events of their life thus far. There are rare exceptions to that in genres like Slice of Life or Mumblecore, where it's just another day sort of thing. Um, or once in a while, maybe there's some way it can work. But for the for the most part, you have to look at what is what stand, your character stands to lose, or what stands to be threatened, or what they what how they how big can they fail? And we need to pump those stakes up as high as you can, um, because movies are about big, important, life changing events. Um, so whether or not those, you know, life changing in a big way or a small way, that's up to you. Sometimes just having a fight with your girlfriend, girlfriend, or, you know, a conflict with your best friend or, uh, your mom or something like that can be really life changing in its own way. Um, defining your relationships differently, moving forward, things like this. Not every movie has to be about people with guns trying to shoot each other. If you are trying to write movies with people with guns shooting each other, you're in the right place. My specialties are horror, action, and thriller, and a lot of sci-fi and fantasy and things like this as well, but um, we are trying to build a community here where we have people of every genre interest, so no matter what genre it is that you're interested in, there, there are different genre groups that might be able to help you with the specifics of some genre more, like we have a romance writers group, because that is not really my specialty, we have a comedy writers group, which is again not really my thing. So um, check those out and feel free to join any of our groups. Even if you are not an unlimited subscriber, you can still come by the genre group meetings week after week. One of the many perks of signing up or, or being here for Script Camp, I should say. Paul says he's writing a Western, which is actually another favorite of mine. Big fan of those. I've written quite a few. Um, okay, so look for big stakes, as big as they can be for your genre. If it's going to be a movie about kids in middle school, then it should be about... Um, you know, a big, the stakes could be as big as like your friend will invite you to a party. That might be big, a big deal for your character. Maybe that's as high as your stakes can be in your specific genre. Um, just pump them up as high as you can. If you're writing action, the stakes should be life and death. If you're writing horror, the stakes should be life and death, unless you have something way better. If you're writing a thriller, the stakes don't necessarily need to be life and death, but they should be very high, very intense, very personal, and keep us on the edge of our seats. Um, look for an idea that isn't way too big, because if your idea feels too big, then that's going to say it seems like you have too much story material or too complicated of a world or just too many characters, and this just seems like it would be a better TV show, or maybe it seems like it's a series of episodic situations rather than one specific situation. Like, like here, So just remember this. A movie is not a series of episodic situations. It's not a setup for a bunch of episodic situations. It is one specific situation that can only unfold in this one way. And because of that, we have to fine tune our log lines very carefully to find the exact arrangement of elements that's going to make that premise really sing and really be clear. Something that might be useful when you're thinking of premises to look at Terry Rossio's word player columns where he talks about this idea of the strange attractor, which is kind of like the promise of the story and the unique way that you are going to kind of fulfill it. Like, in, in trying to execute this vision in your head, like it's not always enough to just go with your first version of how you think this thing might be expressed. You have to kind of narrow down and chip away at this thing and try different versions of the log line or versions with just a few words tweaked until you can get that actual 
result at the end and in like like he talks about in the same article how Shyamalan didn't even really figure out the ending of Sixth Sense until five drafts into the movie didn't even put that twist in place that made the whole thing come together until five drafts in so you have to approach it with this mindset of these things will take iteration to become really perfect the first version of this log line may not necessarily be the final version of it but i'll just keep improving and making it as good as it can be because as the core basis for a much bigger project it's important to have that strong foundation at the start you don't want to have a shaky foundation to as big a project as this okay um what else movies are visual and dynamic and about people doing stuff we want tangible goalposts. So you need to say that your story is going to be tracked through visual action and we should know what we're watching your character do on screen for 90 minutes and we should be able to basically envision what some of those scenes in the middle of that story might be and how they might be fun. Different things are fun in different genres because different genres have vastly different appeal, but we should still, if we are a fan of that genre, it should sound enticing to us. And in terms of the hook, when we say things like the hook, um, the hook is why your fans like fans will watch this even though they've seen a million other movies like this because no matter what you're writing if it's a creature feature well we've seen a thousand trillion creature features you have to imagine the interested audience has seen everything from giant mosquitoes to giant bears to giant bees to giant buzzards to giant um, you know uh, whatever so you have to say I know you've seen a giant creature feature before I know you've seen a lot of them what specifically is the reason you'll come to this one Okay, because I have an animal that you've never seen before. Maybe because I have a protagonist that you've never seen before, or some point of view, or some really cool new twist on the monster that it's going to force our characters to react in some specific way. Maybe I, my creature feature is going to be about wasps that mind control people when they sting them. We've never seen that in a movie before, right? So we're, it's helpful if you think of it's like this, but with this one extra twist. This is the thing that Resia calls that crap plus one uh, way of approaching premise. You don't have to think of it as crap. You can take something cool and then just use that as the basis. You can say, I want to do a movie kind of like Die Hard and then add one other twist to it. Okay, it's kind of like Die Hard, but I'm going to set it in the future and it's instead of being set in an office building, let's set it on a spaceship. Okay, now we have w sort of one-man army action story set on a spaceship. Once you start adding a couple other unique things, it's not going to feel that much like Die Hard anymore and, and it's totally valid to just start from this basis of I want to write something kind of like this and then just add two or three twists to it until you find some unique approach. That just might be a fun way to find something just to focus on for this eight weeks. Find something you like, add a couple tweaks, see what you end up with. Okay, um, let's ask for any questions on log lines before we go into... Uh, I think I, I want to briefly do comps and then we will share what we have. So any questions so far based on what we've talked about here? Question from Dakota, go ahead. Hello, uh, so I've just been looking at um examples of log lines as well and uh something interesting that uh the silence of the lambs log line does is that it has the inciting incident last basically um so in terms of just general structure i know that there's different ways to do it but um what is a what is a way to kind of make it more interesting because i know that that the you can basically put the inciting incident in the middle at the end or in the beginning, but is there quote a wrong way to structure, to structure it? Um, is there a wrong way to structure a logline? Um, I would say a wrong way is one that confuses your reader. Um, if they read it and they don't get, if an experienced reader, let's say reads it and they don't get what the story is about, or they misunderstand some fundamental element, then something's probably wrong. Like a well-written logline should be pretty clear what your story is about um, to people that, I mean, assuming someone has basic literacy in what they are reading and, and what this form is, then um, we should uh, understand the basics. I guess, yeah, I would give it the give it give it the sort of like five-person test. Tell it to five people and ask them to summarize it back to you, 
or um, ask if they have any questions or if it's clear to them. And if they all seem like they get it, then your logline's probably fine. If somebody here and there doesn't understand some elements of it, it's okay. Um, I think that you want to just make sure you're answering the major questions that we have, though. And if you're not answering them, then at least sort of implying what those answers are. So like, I'm going to show you, I realize I might be going a little off track on your question, but I'm just going to show you a couple log lines of mine. Um, so for some of these, like, I, like for all of these, I just started with the basis of that, that one template when inciting incident and adjective protagonist must conflict before stakes. But the more that I refine them and the more that I tried to like put them in different forms for different contests and stuff like this, then it became easier to sort of see how some of the, some of the stakes were implied, for instance, like on Peter and the Wolves. A sensitive boy in Nazi besieged Leningrad must hunt down the cannibal that ate his friend. That's sort of what you're talking about, where the inciting incident is at the end. So you can do that if that works. I mean, I wouldn't try that unless there's a reason why you're doing it. It just made this flow a lot better. And I think that we are implying the stakes, which are, if he doesn't do this, the cannibal will eat him too. So I didn't feel the need to include that in the same reason that you might not need to say when she's attacked by a shark, a woman must fight the shark or be eaten by the shark. It's like, yes, we know what the shark wants to do. Um, anyway, I may have gone a little bit off the rails on answering this one, but I think this is hopefully just to illustrate there's the only wrong way to, to write your log line is in a way where the readers don't get it. And so you have to just litmus, you have to just test people sometimes. You have to just share and get feedback in order to assess whether or not that's the case. And then maybe just use a little checklist like that has some of these basic things like that we've been talking about here. Um, is there a tangible goalpost? Is there a sense of whose story is this? Um, try to just answer those basic questions. And if you can, and if people seem to get it, then you're fine no matter what format it ends up being. You don't have to stick to a, sp a particular format. That makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. It was probably way too many words to answer that question. <laughs> I'm realizing now. I think I over-explained that. Um, I think Dakota gets it. Um, so we have a question. Can we share log lines? Give us just like five minutes. I just want to explain a couple more things before we share log lines. Because when we share log lines, we're going to want to include comps. So comps are... So yeah, when you share, try to put it in this format. It's going to go uh, title, genre comps, then logline. Um, so title, if you don't have a title, you can say untitled or looking for title, whatever you want. Comps are this movie meets that movie. You're comparing your movie to two other movies so we get a better sense of what you're going for in terms of story, content, and tone. So for instance, if you're going to write a historical action adventure movie and your two comps are Lord of the Rings and Pirates of the Caribbean, we're going to expect that there are fantasy elements in your movie. So try not to mislead us by picking titles in totally different genres than what you're going for just because you feel that those themes are similar or something like that um you want to make this as clear and apparent as possible what the story is going to be so I, I recommend maybe starting this from the standpoint of your first comp is going to be like in the world of this so in the setting of this and then the second comp is going to say we have the action of this and that might kind of lead to you realizing if if, if you're doing like Die Hard meets Commando or something like that. That's sort of like chocolate meets chocolate. You may realize that you need to actually maybe tweak a little bit of something about your premise to make it not feel really down the middle. So the comps can actually be an adequate way to test your premise at the very beginning and make sure that you're not writing something that feels like it's been something like this has been exactly done before. I mean, if you say it's like Harry Potter meets Narnia and, we're, and it's a fantasy movie for middle grade, we're going to be like, all right, I feel like we've seen this. So your comps can be an indicator of how good the blog line is going to be and who is going to want to read this and who's going to like it. So try to pick these carefully. The goal is not to show off or to pick something obscure and try to impress everybody because you don't earn bonus points if no one has heard of the comps. They just have to look them up and then you sort of lose points, so to speak. So try not to show off or, or pick bizarre things. Pick things that people will know and that um, clearly illustrate what it is that you're going for. Okay, um, any questions on comps? And while you guys are typing or raising your hands, I'm going to put into the chat the format that you should post your log lines in. We're going to have title, genre, comps, then log line. If you don't have any of those ready to go, you can say unknown or just don't fill it in, but try to put those in if you can. 
We have a question. You write a comp as comparing your movie idea to existing movies. Yes, that's exactly right. So they should be movies that are pretty well known. And you shouldn't use comps that are... It, like, at least one of your comps should be a movie. You can use a TV show as one of them if you want to, but at least one. If you're writing a movie, at least one of your comps should be a movie. Um, the other comp might be a show, or it could be something like, nowadays we see maybe like a video game, or maybe a play sometimes in some weird cases, or a novel if it's a pretty well-known novel, but at least one of them, make sure it's a movie. A suggestion, yeah, so Joya asked, first comp is the world we're in, second comp is the action. Yeah, you can think of it that way. You don't have to use that. That's just like one possible way to approach it that I've had success with before. And if you don't know where else to start, you might try that, but don't you don't have to feel limited to that model. Any other questions on comps or log lines before we share? Okay, I see one person typing a question, so feel free to finish that, and I will answer that as soon as you put it in. Enter that uh, in the chat. Um, I think we are ready to start sharing log lines, so use this template and the fill in the fields that I shared in the chat. Title, genre, comps, log line. When or after, inciting incident, an adjective protagonist, most conflict before stakes. Feel free to post these when you're ready. I'll give you guys a minute or two to do this, and then I'll start calling you up. We're gonna mark them up and give feedback, and you're gonna answer questions so that I can assess your intent with the script and try to help you shape this into the best version of what you're trying to make. I'll give you guys two minutes to post these, then we'll start in the order that we get them in. So we'll be starting with Dakota for sharing them right away. So make sure to share if you'd like that feedback today in class. Thanks guys, I'll give you two minutes. All right, we are back with a bunch of log lines posted. Thank you so much for sharing these guys. One, two, three, four, we have five it looks like. I will get to as many as I can. Let's start with Dakota.
Hello. Hey there. Why don't you read this out for us, and we'll get started. Sure, let me... I'm on my phone, so give me one moment to get back up to it. Okay, so the title is Trinka. It's a historical drama. The comps are the Battle of Algiers and Loving Vincent. And the logline is a politically dissident Czech animator must finish his final film before he is censored by the Soviet government during a revolution. All right. Thanks for this. And yeah, I remember we talked a little about this during one of the previous classes. Um, is the Battle of Algiers a movie? I have not heard of that one. Yes. It is. Okay. Yes, it is. It's from 1966. Oh, okay. Uh, that's you can do that it's just pretty that's a pretty old comp like uh and and typically um you it it's helpful if you pick these if they're really well known i maybe this is just a blind spot of mine and this is a very well known movie um uh, but just as a general tip for everybody if you pick something older make sure it's as well known as i don't know back to the future you know what i mean right maybe right. not a problem though. maybe weird. this is just a super <laughs> fitting comp that just happens to be something i haven't heard of that's fine yeah <laughs> okay it's very fitting it's about it's about political revolution uh algiers is trying to gain independence from france that's what that's what uh, the film is about okay a politically Fantastic. dissident czech animator must finish his final film before he's censored by the soviet government during a revolution so you've done a much better job of just setting up the kind of basics of the era without going into too much detail here so i think mm -hmm. that's well done why does he need to finish the film though Ooh. right so generally <laughs> that's kind of my issue is because a lot of it was he was trying to support the so a lot of it was supporting democracy because the revolution was a democratic revolution to have democracy in Czechoslovakia and the whole point of the film is to basically be dissident and to support the idea of democracy and to have creative freedom and expression in Europe. Um, so that was the point of the film. It's why he made it. Um, because at the time, there was no creative freedom in Eastern Europe until this guy made something. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so in terms of why he needs to do it, it's because he understands the need of having creative freedom again um it's supporting uh democratization basically is what it is okay. um in terms of how to put that in a log line i'm not sure yet because let me ask it is you handy. this question that might help um mm -hmm. so he really made this movie and it came out right so he accomplished yes. his goal yes and as a result of that well, what happened uh, the Prague Spring ultimately happened, um, and that failed, but it led to the uh, West understanding what was going on in Eastern Europe at the time. Okay. It still feels a little abstract the way that you're explaining it, I guess. when So when you say the Prague Spring happened as a direct result of the this project, this, this film that he's making, I can get behind so, that if you can sort of frame it and on along those terms like this is the the thing that will push the culture into full revolution mode or something like that maybe like does that make sense or is there something there yeah 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 it does and that's essentially what supposedly like it's definitely a factor in it for sure um there was a lot of things going on of course but yeah one of the things that did that supposedly inspired the Prague spring was this cartoon that this guy made Okay, so you're saying supposedly maybe this part of it and stuff like this. I think for the purposes of this movie, in order for us to buy into these stakes, you have to say the nation is perched on the the verge of revolution. This is going to be the straw that or the match that sets it off. You, you see what I mean? Like in order, for, yeah, I think right. you're you're trying to stay very close to the actual history, which is commendable. But for the purposes of crafting a narrative, you may have to sort of like pick a lane a little bit and say, no, this is what caused the revolution to happen. Right. You don't have to lie. You just, in in terms of expressing what, why is this actually important? Just saying, well, he's trying to res generally restore the idea of creative freedom doesn't sound like a movie. Whereas, this is a subversive film that will spark a movement. Does sound like a movie. 
Right. Does that right. make sense and give you some ideas of how you yeah. might sort of frame yeah. the stakes? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It sounds cool. But believe me, I'm I'm here for it and this is it's a unique true story and I've have never heard of this and it sounds neat. Um and if you can frame it in that urgent of terms, if you can make it feel it just needs to feel important that this has to happen. Um in the in the same sense that like I'm sure you've seen movies like The Imitation Game and things like this right. where it's like we really draw a direct connection between what this character is doing and the direct effect that it has. And we sort of might be combining certain people and sort of like um, creating a version of events where Turing is really pivotal in this specific way. Like he caught saves this battleship or whatever, instead of just like, a, and, and maybe that happened or maybe it didn't, I'm not sure, but you can see how like a scene where your character as a result of his espionage saves a battleship, as opposed to just saying, well, he generally contributed to the end of the war is just a more concrete way of framing that story in cinematic terms. Um, so right. I hope I, I've probably again over explained this, but I hope that makes sense <laughs> and that allows you to sort of um, just reframe this a little bit. Tell us why this needs to happen. Why is it important? What are the actual stakes? Right. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, let's do our next one. Carlos, a dangerous celebration action comedy. Hey, Carlos. Yes, yeah, sorry, hi. <laughs> no worries. Why don't you start us off with this one? Uh, yeah, like you said, um, a dangerous celebration. It's an action film. The comps, it's uh, Die Hard meets the Nice Guys. And the log line, um, an aging hitman must must escape his retirement party before his co-workers give him the ultimate send-off. Okay, I'm in for this. One second. Okay, I'm going to make sure I understand. So, an aging hitman must escape his retirement party before his co-workers give him the ultimate send-off. So, um... Let me ask a couple questions. So The Nice Guys is a mystery noir type plot, right? Yes. Why is that one of your comps on this? Is is just in terms of the tone, or is there some kind of mystery noir type plot here? It seems like there's no actual question as to what's going on. Yeah, and I, I actually, I was struggling with this a bit because um, I initially had it as just action, but I, like, in thinking through the premise, you know, I've been kind of going back and forth between action and action comedy, and so I thought like the nice guys might be a good kind of compromise or, you know, like something like, uh, like Die Hard is like a setting and tonal foundation with that sort of like lighter energy to it um, that kind of keeps it from being super self-serious or um, self-important. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest, like that was, it was really tough to think about the com. So that's Have something I'm extremely... you heard of a movie changing. called Red? Like R-E-D, Retired, Extremely Dangerous? Yeah, is that the... Yeah, sorry, yes, I'm familiar. Yeah, I think it's also Bruce Willis in that one as well. Yes, yes, um, yeah. That's like, what if team of old people were cool killer guys? Um, <laughs> so, and there's even a sequel, I think. So that might be a better. I would probably scrap both the comps. I would go with Red meets something else and find what makes this a little more unique as your second comp. Does that make sense? So yeah, like, no, I like that a lot. If if we're starting with this basis of old guy hitman must escape his retirement party. His co-workers are all trying to kill him, meaning his assassin squad? Um, no, actually, although I, I appreciate you mentioning this, because, yeah, I'm, I'm really kind of uh, to be implicit that he's part of, like, organization, essentially, or that, like, you know, he, he knows fellow hitmen, because that's, like, a, you know, uh, an environment where if there's anybody that would know about what you're doing, it's the people doing the same horrible thing. Um, and then, you know, kind of just like that it's... So these aren't uh, really coworkers, if that's the case. Those are rivals. Um, I I suppose so. Yeah, that's actually a good point. Which so raises I... this question of why would you not think that was a giant trap where they're trying to kill you? I actually I, I like a glance. I do prefer it as part of like some sort of organization. Um, you can do which that. Definitely. Yeah, which definitely sounds like something that would need to be included here. So if it's like in Hitman 47 type agency, you can definitely do that, yes. in which case they would be straight up co-workers. But then it's going to be the question of why are they all turning on? Like, if this isn't the sort of thing that happens all the time, this is like a special case. Why him in particular? Did he make some kind of big mistake? 
Did he mess up in some way? Did he make somebody angry? Who is the one that turned on him? Is that the question? Okay, that's that's an interesting question, and I actually, um, if I were like chewing on the logic of this, like based off of what I was initially thinking, um, I suppose uh, this would be something that's uh, like routine, essentially, and uh, you know that's basically like the the commitment you make when you join, right? Is that like you're going to you know, when you're finally done, then, like, you die so that you don't have any risk of revealing secrets or like that. Um, and this guy in particular, like, chooses to be the one, because there's been, um, in this world, I would guess, many escape attempts. And then this is, he's the one who, uh, I guess, succeeds, but that's not unique. Yeah, the thing this all adds up to is just uh, Hitman is being pursued by his former employer and needs to shoot a bunch of guys, though, right? Like, it's it's not that there's anything terribly wrong with that. It's just that that particular setup and arrangement doesn't lead us to new set pieces that we haven't seen before, necessarily. What you yeah. could maybe think is, like, if this is, imagine this agency, they have, like, a retirement plan. It's called the retirement plan or retirement party or something like that. And every spy, they get this. I mean, this still seems pretty obvious, but it's like, you get a great vacation when you finally retire from the agency. I mean, any hitman worth their salt would know that no other hitman that w who retired was ever heard from again, wouldn't they? But in any case, it might be, or maybe they have like a witness, like a protection program. If you mess up big time on a job, they send you on a trip. <laughs> and then it turns well, out that trip is actually killing them or something like that, which might say we're going to have set pieces that are in this exotic location that you've picked for the trip or something. Sure, sure. Go ahead. That's a good point. Um, sorry, like, I, I want to make it clear that, like, I want to give these characters credit where it's due, you know, like, they're not naive or anything like that. And mm -hmm. in fact, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because, like, in thinking about it now, I'm thinking about, like, Looper, right, where they're mm -hmm. keenly aware of what happens at the end of it there. And so I suppose in that case... Yeah, no, no, I, I, I'm, I'm beginning to see, like, the lack of internal stakes and then, uh, like, again, like, a distinct element to it, so. Yeah, I would I would maybe use that, I think, with his, with his uh, retire, quote, retirement party coming up, dot, 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 a desperate hitman, you know, trying to get out of this fate needs to mm. blank and blank to get out of it, you know, th think of something unique that your character can do. I, I kind of like the idea of when you're done with us, you get killed no matter what. Maybe there's something <laughs> that you can, if you use that as the ticking clock or something like that. Or maybe, yeah, try to try to try to make this a little more unique. I, there's nothing wrong with just having like you're not going to get pe penalized or a bad grade or whatever if your idea isn't unique enough. But I guess I would just suggest to try to find some arrangement of elements here that we haven't seen the exact thing before, and just will give you a little more fuel in in terms of coming up with premise scenes um, that will just help you make the movie better as you go through the process. Gotcha. Um, are just just out of curiosity, at a glance, do you or like at a thought, do you know of any other films like besides Looper that are kind of like that premise of like? Yeah. Uh, have you yeah, seen? I'd, I'd love to get some suggestions. Have you seen In Bruges? Yes. Oh yeah. Duh. Okay. That's kind of a similar thing, right? Where it's like assassins reaching their retirement, they're getting murdered by their boss because they made a mistake or did the wrong thing. Um, maybe there's something there. Awesome. And then I see a Nacho suggestion. Okay, um, in that case, I will chew on this and keep it going, but thank you for the feedback. I appreciate it. Sure, sure. If you haven't seen Seven Psychopaths also. I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it now. Great, great follow-up to In Bruges by the same writer-director. Perfect. Cool. Um, so I realized the notes there were a little diffuse. I was sort of saying, pick something else, kind of, a little bit, but I think you have a lot there that you just need to arrange very slightly differently, but you'll find something. I'm sure you'll settle on something unique and cool coming up. Yeah, this is getting the gears turning, so again, I appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Carlos. Okay, let's keep going. Get through as many as we can. We will look at Michelle, my trip to Oz, and how I killed the Wicked Witch of the West. Is this a PDF? Oh, it is. Okay. Are you there, Michelle? I've called on Michelle. She'll need to accept the invitation to answer questions here. If she can't accept, maybe try rejoining the chat room if you need to. You're invited to the stage. 
Okay, I'm going to move on to the next, but I will check back with Michelle after this one. Let's move on to Lalo or Eduardo with his coming of age movie. Called In Love With You. Hey. Hey there. Can you read your log line out for us? Uh, I'm nervous. Ah, okay, I, I can read it. Well, <clears throat> after pa the pandemic, uh, the pandemic, uh, a lonely boy with isolation issues will begin his senior year of high school, falling in love with a girl who will make him feel human in the process. All right. Thanks for sharing this. So your comps are her meets punch drunk love after the pandemic, a lonely boy with isolation issues. So instead of saying will begin, that's future tense. So just keep it present tense. Just say he begins his senior year of high school and then maybe express a little more clearly for us. What is the conflict here from this log line? It doesn't sound like anything's wrong. What actually is your character struggling with? What is the challenge that he's facing? Uh, well, it's the the, the 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 capacity to connect with other people, and this girl appears and shows him that he's capable to like uh, engage and having healthy relationships. Uh, oh well, I don't know how to say it, but the idea I have is like make make the protagonist idolize that girl. And all, uh, to, I don't I, I need to clarify that conflict. Like, oh, well, right, which in, uh, in a second. This idea of how a person that doesn't love you back make you improve in your person, in, in your in your way to treat the others. Oh, she doesn't love him back? No. She's, for, 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 for her, he's just a classmate. Oh, okay. I think I may have misunderstood in, in that case. So, a lonely boy with isolation issues begins his... So, he's falling in love with her, but the conflict is that she yeah. doesn't love him back. Okay, so he's trying to win her over? So, uh, yeah, trying to conquer her or like having our, or, or establishing a relationship. Okay, I see. So I think what you need to do is instead of saying he's falling in love with her, I think you want, like you're going to want to express what this conflict is. So whatever specific way he's going to try to win her over, I think you need to express that in the log line. Like in some movies, your character might try to win over the love interest by winning a battle of the bands or by, I don't know, getting a part in a play with her or something like that. You see what I mean? Where you just want to try to maybe find that specific method that your main character is going to use to try to impress or win over the heart of this other character. And it might also be helpful if you tell us something about her, because in a romance with two characters, if we know a little bit about both of them, it might help us envision what the different conflict scenes well, might be. Go ahead. Well, my idea to this character is that uh, she wants to be a model or like something related to arts, and he wants to be a photographer. And like they have the, that relationship of well, I I, I take I, I I help you with your career, I help you with mine, but nothing else. Like that's it. And in the story, he will try to I don't know uh, to to be a, a better person, more interesting, like being less isolated to understand her and know how he will will approach to her. So he has to kind of leave his comfort zone in order to approach her because she's more popular than he is. Is that right? Or more, she's more, has more friends. Exactly. Okay, I would try to express that in the logline so we more get friends. right, uh, right. Very different circle. I see. Okay. okay. So yeah, try to express. Oh. The, it's, try to tell us that in the logline. Try to tell us that he has to become someone else in order to be with her. He he tries to join a new social group. Or he has to, you know, maybe say specifically what he has to do. Um, you know, he, he has to win this contest in order to get in with this group to hang out with her. Or maybe he has to, you know, just create this other version of himself. He has to pretend to be someone else. T try to tell us what he has to do. What is what is standing in the way of him actually being with her? And you'll tell us how he tries to accomplish that goal. 
Okay, I, I okay, I I will read it, I write it, or oh, well, thank it to writing and 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 get a better luck. Like, thank you for clarifying that. No problem. Thank, thank you. you so much uh, for sharing. I I I, I thought that that that. No, uh, thank you for for giving the feedback. All right. So um, as soon as you get feedback, I would on your sketchbook just start writing out a new version, trying to get that finalized by the end of today, if you can. Let's move to Joel. Oh, wait, sorry. Let me check. Did Michelle come back? Michelle, I'm going to try inviting you up again. Okay. Seems like maybe you're still not able to join, so I'm just going to move to Joel. Joel, are you here? Yeah, hello. Hey, all right. We've got a sci-fi. Why don't you read this out for us? Are you still there? Uh, yeah, I'm here. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, when he discovers his wheelchair as an alien, a shorter disabled boy must protect, uh, protect wheelchairs from genocidal aliens. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Transformers. Yes, it is. That, that could be definitely one of the cops. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So he discovers his wheelchair as an alien. A sheltered disabled boy must help protect wheelchairs from genocidal aliens. Why does... So... Is is there a race of wheelchair aliens, or is this just an alien disguised as a wheelchair? Uh, well, this is part of a dilemma I had. I was like, how much do I want this to be like Transformers? And at what point are Transformers going to sue me? Um, <laughs> so I, I, I figured that um, they just look like wheelchairs, and um, actually, like I started writing a bit of a backstory where they came to Earth 200 years ago, or something like that. And they were actually the inspiration behind wheelchairs um, and humans creating wheelchairs. Okay, I see. So we're saying that the aliens came first, but they ha the designs of modern wheelchairs just happened to resemble them? Yes. <laughs> okay, sure, why not? <laughs> I kind of like it. I mean, I especially can think of some good... Um, you say family sci-fi, maybe comedy or drama. Are there action scenes, though? Uh, yes, I think so. <laughs> okay, so I, I um, might go with I might go with sci-fi action then, because what I mean, what I was imagining as the what is the fun in games here is the wheelchair has rocket boosters, the wheelchair can shoot missiles, the wheelchair has a laser. I wasn't is going it, to that. What we're doing? I wasn't going to do that. I was sort of um. Make them a bit more true to life, rather than, you know, um, yeah, it, it wasn't going to be particularly action sequences. Okay, so wait, help me understand what the wheelchairs can do if they can't fly and shoot lasers and stuff. Um, well, I mean, I feel like it's, it, they're similar to humans, you know, humans don't do much. Um, they just happen to have a metal body, that, that sort of thing. So they're, they're not, like, they don't have weapons attached to them or whatever. Um, and they're quite a peaceful race, which is why they um, they sort of left their home planet rather than trying to fight the genocide or aliens. They're a bit like, um, what are they called? The Boo, Boo from Home. Sorry, the like what? Pixar or DreamWorks. Boo from Home. Boo from Home? Yeah, so it's a, uh, um, oh, what's it called? What's it, um, is it DreamWorks? A DreamWorks film, I think. Somebody uh, yeah, will that to link one. it to me. Yeah, I, I've never heard of this. That one. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's a kid's film. Um, so I've got an echo in my ear, sorry. That's okay. It's really not pretty. Um, <laughs> um... So I guess I, I guess I thought right. I, I guess um, I thought I understood. Yeah, they're, they're peaceful, with... right? Go ahead. 
Yeah, there are peaceful reasons. So they've fled their home planet um, and found her. And uh, they thought they were safe. And now it turns out the genocidal aliens have now found them and are coming to Earth. Okay, can you answer this question for me, though? How do we stop genocidal aliens and protect these these aliens from them if we aren't using action like if we aren't fighting them how are we what is what is what are we watching characters do in your movie so my um my internet sort of going so you're crossing out now um but yeah i i think um it's something i need to put a lot of thought into i'm not actually seeing et um but I, I would imagine it would be something like that. I'm not thought about it, basically. Okay, that's a, yeah. It's okay if you don't know the answers or aren't quite sure yet. Um, my my first assumption is genocide. You say your main character needs to protect something from genocidal aliens. Then my thought would be, uh, I'm just looking at the ingredients we have here. The wheelchairs will help him do that somehow. If that's not the case, you need to maybe figure out some other hook for what exactly this movie is, or what can the wheelchairs actually do, um, or what would make this... What's 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 the hook here, I guess, is the, the question. If you're framing this as a comedy or as a drama, even, which was what you originally had under the genres, maybe you had some idea of some specific conflict that your character has to overcome or take part in in order to save these wheelchairs. I mean, what is it? Like a galactic open mic? What does he have to do? I, I, we're just looking for... Uh, think, think specifically about how does your main character actually go about accomplishing his goal in the story, and what are what are the kind of premise scenes that we can look forward to? Uh, yeah, so I suspect it, it won't be an open mic, but something along those lines, or maybe like a plan to help... Uh, be like a negotiator or mediator or something like that. It might be. Okay. Um, Can the wheelchairs go fast? Yeah. One of the things they can do is fly. Um, but it's, you know, one of the things, one of the only things that they can do that normal wheelchairs can't. Is fly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. that, that's pretty significant. All right. Um, so yeah, I would just take those take those notes, keep that in mind, try to try to help us envision a bit more of what are the blockbuster moments, what are the premise scenes, what is the fun to be had here. I mean, you have a you have the basic setup of kid meets alien, kid needs to help alien, everything's working there just fine, um, and the wheelchair element is funny, and I I think it's um, very over the top, but it seems like you have a good um, I, I explanation for it within the world or whatever. Um, but yeah, try to clarify. What are we watching people do in the movie? How do they go about stopping these aliens? What is the actual plan? Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. We've got more. We will just keep going straight through. Hope everyone is getting some good material for their log lines and is getting their questions answered. And I'll still try to take questions between log lines in the chat. So let us know. Again, if you haven't signed up yet, scriptcamp.net. You can sign up for unlimited membership, which includes access to every other class on every server that we do on Skill Camp. So novel writing, TV writing, feature writing, tons of other topics. You can sign up now yearly for just $19 a month or enroll monthly for $29 a month. Okay, um, I want to check back in our chat and move on to our next log line. Um, let me try Michelle again. And if that doesn't work, I will move on to the next one. Okay, so I'm going to move on to next, which we have Terry. Diamonds of Sonoran. Hi, Terry. Can you hear us? 
I'm sorry, I was on mute again. I'm so I apologize for that. No problem, um, you're, you're good. So, I taught, I spoke about this one a little bit with you um, mm -hmm. uh, last Sunday, but I was going to do an adaptation of Ricky Ticky Tavi, where in that unconventional sense of flipping the story on its head, and what I have is a adventure kids and family animated film um that i'm still kind of working on the title but my log line is a pair of rattlesnakes venture across the sonoran arizona desert to save their children from an outlandish politician and his pet badger before they are executed at a rattlesnake rodeo all right so I'm actually not familiar with the source material here, so I'm approaching this just completely blind, and um, as it, it's brand new to me. Um, a pair of rattlesnakes venture across the Sonoran, Sonoran, Arizona desert to save their children from an outlandish politician and his pet badger before they, the children, are executed at a rattlesnake rodeo. Um, so a couple questions. One, I guess instead of saying a pair of rattlesnakes, I think you should pick a main character. So focus on one of this couple um, rather than saying both of them. Um, we should... I kind of am wondering, are the animal characters able to talk to the human characters? Or is this... What kind of world is this exactly? Is this one where... Uh, do the humans and animals interact or no? Not entirely. I, I, I'm treating it in the same vein as something like Finding Nemo or Back to the Outback, where you have your if your animal characters are able to communicate amongst each other, but um, that's really the extent of what they are to humans. They're just animals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they're not able to communicate. There's like a bit of a, I guess, a block in terms of like, you know, you can't have a human understand an animal and vice versa you can if it's b movie you um, can but, <laughs> but in any case <laughs> so let, let me ask this is the whole movie taking place in this one trip across the desert yeah so that's the setting of the the film uh, a lot of it would be the sonoran desert for what i know extends from mexico you know at least northwest mexico all the way to the, the bottom of Nevada, um, maybe a little bit more into California as well, but that pretty much is the whole setting, the whole, uh, it's got more of that road trippy vibe. Um, I thought Finding Nemo was like the perfect comp for it because it's very much across the, the Pacific Ocean. Right. Um, I mean, Rango might be a pretty good comp, I would think, um, but... Beyond that, it seems like you've spent quite a few words on your villains, an outlandish politician and his pet badger, but your main characters won't be able to encounter those villains because they're spending almost the entire movie in the desert. So it makes me feel like you should either reframe this as a sort of like episodic wilderness sur survival thriller kind of story where you can suggest that they need to deal with things like sandstorms and treacherous predators and other things like that along the way. Or if somehow this politician and the badger are able to act against your characters along the way, then you need to free reframe that so that makes sense. Does does this does, do you see what I'm saying here? I do. It's just I, I have set up where they're aware of when and that's what they're trying to find. Um, something like a fly, like a leaf letter flying out of a truck, or, or there's like some kind of. Uh, there's something that leads them there, you know. It's kind of like the snorkel goggles from Nemo, um, or the the feather from Toy Story Two that gives them the the giveaway that it's Alice Toy Barn. It's something like that that I guess I was uh, leaning on in terms of like where they need to go. Right, and... but in, but in a logline for Finding Nemo, I wouldn't spend a bunch of words on saying this kid's been taken by a dentist and his daughter who keeps him in a fish tank in mm -hmm. the in the dentist office. I think we would focus more on when Marlon's son is taken, he has to traverse a vast ocean full of these challenges. You know what I mean? With this partner along the way. And I think that's that to me, the partner thing is probably the biggest hurdle I have. Um, I could probably cut the pat, the, the badger out of the log line itself. Um, however, I think when I look at, I think I used pet or rattlesnakes because it is a mother and a father. And I don't know how to, I guess, to condense that further without 
uh, do you think I should still specifically focus on one of the parents instead of two of them? Yeah, it'll make it so much easier to do what you're talking about. I mean, if you say it's about a, you know, if especially if we start to understand that the conflict between them is going to be a lot of what we're watching for. I mean, think of what is it, Marlon? He's a an overprotective father and a neurotic, forgetful. Uh, I don't exactly know what her thing is. <laughs> I don't know what I'd call her. But Dory is like, she's a, essentially a stranger with memory problems. So you need to define your central couple in such a way that we can understand why is this going to be fun to watch them. They're the ones we're going to be spending the whole movie with. So you might as well frame it as something like, you know, when the adventurous husband and the stay at home, the, you know, what is it? Like shy, agoraphobic wife, whatever it is that's actually makes them, comes up as a point of conflict between them, whatever makes them clash off each other and bounce off each other in interesting ways. You can frame that at the center of the narrative for sure. Especially because it's a road trip story. That's how these mm -hmm. always work. Does that all make sense? Any questions about this one? No, I think I'm good. Um, but thank you. Sure. Thank you so much for sharing, Terry. All right. Let's do the Mark of the Seraphites sci-fi action. I'm not sure what this username is, but I'll invite you up. says, I'm not able to see no working mic. Okay, well, we're going to have to um, call on students that are able to answer questions about their log lines, but I can at least quickly look at yours and give you just some first read comments. Um, so let me just take a look at the March of the Seraphites really quick. All right, sci-fi action, Transformers and Avengers are comps. A disbanded group of eight superheroes named Seraphites. Let me paste it in here. A, dis a disbanded group of eight superheroes named Seraphites must reunite in time to defend Earth against an alien attack from space. I think we would expect an alien attack to come from space, so you might be able to take that out. I guess I'm wondering, my main question is, what's the conflict? So what is keeping these eight different superheroes from reuniting? We're also going to want a clearer focus on a protagonist. So this is sort of like Watchmen, perhaps, as like... Uh, uh, or like you mentioned Avengers, this team needs to come together. Eight characters is a huge ensemble for a movie, so that's like even bigger than Avengers, which was a very long movie. So you have a lot of work to do here, but I would still try to frame this around which character actually needs to be the one most actively gathering this team together. And then you want to say what's standing in the way. What are we actually watching your characters deal with as they try to reunite the team members? Is it that each of the team members has retired to various blue-collar jobs and now they no longer want to be heroes anymore, then we get the idea of maybe what those different set pieces could be as your main character has to go from place to place, trying to get your characters to, I don't know, quit their jobs. That almost feels like a sort of comedy-based version of this idea. You can take it however you want, but just think, what are the actual set piece scenes? What are we watching for? And think of, like, what, do the main what does the main character need to do to accomplish this task? Is this just going to be him going from person to person and calling them all and being like, hey, want to join the team to save the Earth? You might need to specify what the conflict is that's stopping that from happening. Thank you for sharing the logline, though. <clears throat> All right, let's go to Verb with Children of Lilith or Demon Rising. Hi, Verb. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great. Why don't you start us off with this one? Um, what would you like to know? The logline, if you can read that out, please. Uh, when a part succubus and a half angel get together, they must battle to get their families to accept not just their fledgling re relationship, but must also convince them to work together. Only by using a combination of ancient technology and demon magic can they keep the faction, a clandestine uh, demon organization, from opening the seven seals. Should they fail, all hell will break loose, quite literally. Right. Okay, great. Um, so this is pretty clear. It's just a little long worded, long, long word. What is it? What do we say? Long winded. Um, so this is three sentences. I think you can fit this all into one single sentence. Um, and um, let me look at your first sentence here and see if we can condense it down a little bit. So your comps are West Side Story meets Supernatural. Uh, 
Okay, so when a part succubus and a half angel, so you're saying one of them is part and one of them is half, which does raise a question right off the bat, but I think I, I'm not too confused by it. They get together, they must battle to get their families to accept not just their fledgling relationship, but convince them to work together against a an army of evil demons, whatever it is, right? So I think you can kind of do a lot, like we don't quite need to go into as much detail about how specifically they'll use a combination of ancient technology and demonic magic. We don't need to know about the faction probably. Um, oh wait, unless that's that's the name of the enemy. Is that the name of the enemy? Yeah, it is. Okay. So um, try to just get this down to one sentence. And also I think another big question I have is just, is this just about your characters talking? Because you framed the conflict as they have to battle to get their families to accept their relationship and convince them to work together. So is that just like we get them together in a room and we just ask them to work together? Is this like, uh, or how specifically, I guess, would be my question? Um, it They actually can't work together because one group can't figure out what's going on um, without the without the assistance of the other group. It's, it's only by working together that they realize what is actually happening. So there's um, there's the resistance between the families about wanting you know the two to, to get together and to spend time together, and um, the day after um, Alistair is basically shot on the street and they don't know whether he's the target or she's the target, um, they're they're having not necessarily an intimate moment but just sort of a, a quiet moment, and um, she is not wearing she's not wearing her illusion that she always wears and she has a bunch of rings that she wears that that help her control it and he realizes that the writing on the interior of the ring is the same writing that they've been trying to translate on this piece of ancient technology and so unless the two groups work together they realize that not only that but the technology itself won't work without um without both angelic and demonic energy like one charges one section and the other chart. So it, they literally, the none of the technology will work and they can't even translate it without the, without, without the, the, the assistance of the demons. Um, so is it, is it like in that case, your characters need to get a thing? Do they, are they trying to retrieve something? Are they trying to, to go ahead. What is, is see, it's a very long complex. It's actually more of a, not so much a, a film as, as a, as a series, so that would be right. the, the series um, log line, and um, the group of half angels, um, something that belongs to their father, a piece of technology that belongs to their father, spontaneously turns on, and at the same time, there's a physical effect going on among the demons, um, which which in, which involves a series of nosebleeds that all of them are having simultaneously, in in, in waves coming out from a central point. Um, in terms of time, uh, as a result of the faction's attempt to open one of the seven seals, they they do it wrong and they basically um, mess up the magic and, and it spreads out and it affects all the demons for about 3,000, 4,000 miles. Okay. So, epicenter. And so their demons are going to chase it back to the epicenter, but they don't, they don't know exactly where that is. And the unbeknownst to them, the angels actually have a thing that will track where the epicenter of the thing is going on, but don't know how to use it and don't know what it is. And it's only when the two come together that they realize that the two things are connected. What's go? Well, what 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 might actually be going on, and are able to track down the anomaly, and 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 um and take care of the situation. But it, it, initially, it's 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 you know um. The two of them sort of going about the very different lives, but they, they've run into each other, they've met, and they like each other. So they, they they keep seeing each other despite their family's objections, and they find out later that that it, you know um, that they need to work together. And of course, the families are, are are sort of against it because angels and demons don't work together. Right, right. Okay. So in re envisioning this in, instead of a series as a feature. I think you need to more clearly lay out what this concrete objective is that your characters have to accomplish. So in saying they have to battle to get their families to accept their relationship, that sounds like a series of many, many, many different conflicts. Whereas if yeah. you think of a movie like 
Constantine, right? It's like, this spear has been unearthed, and now we need to get that spear before the bad guy gets it to stop him. Does I'm that make sense? Thinking, go ahead. I don't know if I'm actually going to try and write it as a movie. I would rather probably try and go for a series. Okay, with okay. It. So yeah, so. it's looking much more like a strong series logline, so I'd recommend the pilot class for this one instead if you want to keep it in that form. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, come yeah come to class on Sunday, and I'll be able to give you more feedback. But this looks pretty good as a series logline. Okay, yeah, because it is it is yeah meant to be a series logline rather than an A. And I know this is supposed to be a film class, but this is the closest that I've got right now because I'm still working on the novel. That's okay. Yeah, no problem at all. And um, yeah, feel free to stop by Sundays, ten to noon Pacific time, and we have uh, TV classes that'll help you develop this more. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate your time. Thanks so much. All right, let's move to Shakira. Hello. Um, so I've been trying to kind of um, work on that uh, the log line from last time. So my title is Perfect Shot. The genre is drama. So it's the comps is Boys in a Hood meets Music of the Heart. And the log line is An Awkward Student tired of art school uses city as his art class and meets unlikely students who show him the missing ingredient in his art. All right. Thanks for sharing. So I think Mm -hmm. last time in the week zero class, you had, I think a bit of a different, maybe approach to this. Yeah. So that, that one involved him sort of coming up with an alternate persona to sort of uh, convince people to be into his art. Is, so this is a new version, is that right? Yeah, it's a new version. I feel like, you know, that still kind of applies, but not so much into the whole movie where he, like, <laughs> at first, he's come, he becomes, like, a, a gang member at first, and then he kind of shows himself. But I feel like this would be, like, a different touch to it. Okay. And so just to be a little bit, like, bare bones. Got it. So let me ask, what? so just from the logline, the student uses the city as his art class and meets unlikely students who show him the missing ingredients. A lot of log lines will use this word must, like the character must okay. do something. It's not that you have to use that word, but that word is just an easy shortcut for us to see. Like, what does your character have to do? Where's the urgency? Okay. Like, what is the specific objective? So mm-hmm. <clears throat> movies work really well. Like, and, and there is a, there are genres of sort of ensemble movies where... Like, for instance, like Jim Jarmusch movies or like um, movies like Slacker or David Linklater movies where it's just kind of about characters bumping into each other, having conversations and meeting people Mm -hmm. and doing stuff. It's not that you can't Mm -hmm. do that, but what I would recommend is finding a bit of a clearer, cleaner point of conflict at the center of this. So say your character is, this is like one of these cliches of this genre, but it's like, we're trying to raise money to save this art installation or this school or this library. You know what I mean? And that just gives you like a really clear, Mm -hmm. tangible goal. Mm -hmm. Whereas just in in the log line here, I'm just seeing a guy kind of meets people and they hang out. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Okay. So the conflict can be whatever you want it to be. Um, And since you're in drama, it should be something realistic and relatively serious Mm -hmm. and straightforward. It doesn't have to be, he's going to die if he doesn't do it or anything like that. But if your character has something he wants pretty badly and that thing he's able to accomplish a version of that thing that just feels like it's complete and concrete. Like that's why people love the battle of the band storyline or the raise Mm -hmm. the money to save the library storyline or things like that. Cause it just has such a clear number on it. It's like, that is definitively Mm -hmm. done. I would try to find something like that. Um, And it can still be in this sort of lower stakes world. If you want, it should just be something your character cares about and really wants to accomplish. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Any questions on this one? I uh, know. I think I, you know, I, I understand. Yeah. Okay, cool. And you say perfect shot. Does that mean he's doing photography? Yeah, I want it to be like a little bit more broad art, but maybe it just making sure maybe photography is is the thing. Okay, so yeah, I would mention that in the logline too. Like, what specific kind of art will he be doing? Yeah. That's going to tell us like what kind of subculture he's going to be involved in because different arts have very different people who are into them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so just get more specific. Find that point of conflict and find something external to kind of frame the movie around if you can. Okay. Thank you for sharing, Shakira. No problem. Thank you. 
All right, we have a uh, room for a couple more. We have Vincent Price's inferior twin. And we have Joya, so we're gonna get to at least those two. I'll try to get to as many as I can. I'll stay a couple minutes over and try to do one or two more. Let's start with Vincent Price. Flesh, Blood, and Capes. Wow, that sounds like a unique title. Reminds me of Dracula. Are you here, Vincent? Are you in the room with us? I have requested you to speak. We can see your text message, but we cannot see your... We cannot hear you at the moment, so you, if you're on a device, you may need to turn it to the side or disconnect and reconnect. There you are. Hello? Hey there. Uh, can you hear me? I hear you, yep. Wonderful. Okay, thank you so much. No worries. Let's get started. Why don't you read this log line out for us? All right. <clears throat> title, Flesh, Blood, and Capes, uh, working title. Genre, uh, heist and sci-fi horror, uh, comps off the top of my head. The Boys from Dust Till Dawn, Dawn of the Dead. Uh, I got recommended a show called Super Crooks, but I have not seen that yet. Uh, Logline. A bumbling group of surviving supervillains attempt one last heist after all the world's heroes succumb to a cannibalistic plague. Okay, this sounds kind of cool. Um, a bumbling group of surviving supervillains. Sounds a little strange because you haven't told us what they're surviving to begin with, though. So I'm a, my brain immediately goes, wait, what? When I start reading this. So a bumbling group of supervillains would probably be a better way to start this. But you should sure. focus on a central main... Start with the main character. Who is this about specifically? Who is this about? Um, so give us that main that main guy. You know, a former criminal mastermind with psychic powers must lead a group of bumbling villains, something like that. They attack uh, one yes, so... after all the world's heroes succumb to a cannibalistic plague. So all the world's heroes turn into zombies and eat each other. Am I right? Eh, kind of, or at least eat the world. <laughs> they're, they're still running around. That's that's like the big hazard. Oh, they're still out there. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So why is it one last heist? Why not just do a bunch of heists? I guess the idea being that they are like well, one since you know there's no longer really like the idea of superheroes and supervillains is kind of reliant on having like law structures, right? That there's there's authority, there's law, there's like criminal justice. Obviously, that doesn't really exist when the people enforcing that criminal justice essentially go, you know, zombie. So I guess the idea is here, it's like a last hurrah. Maybe it's an, uh, I'm still figuring out, like, the actual motivation, but maybe it's an opportunity to just, I guess, stick it one last time and remember the old days before they all inevitably die. Since they've clearly, since, you know, this is, you know, having, like, undead demigods running around everywhere is probably not a situation you would survive. Alternatively, yeah. it could be yeah. Alternatively, it could be some sort of a MacGuffin, but I just don't want to get too tropey there, right? Maybe, so, maybe maybe it's something like I don't know a device that'll destroy the world and all the like superheroes for good, right? There's always those in like superhero media. So it's cool that you have the zombies of all the heroes still running around causing chaos. That's interesting, but the fact that it's the end of days makes a heist almost meaningless, and there's no reason any of your characters could just stop and then they would be fine. Um, so I think having purely emotional motivations to commit a high stakes heist is not the best way to go in this case. I think maybe mm -hmm. you might need to say there's a limited amount of time till they cure the heroes or that they, until the hero, until law and order is restored. Cause that kind of takes advantage of the fact that you have a limited time where there's no one stopping the villains from doing what they want, almost like the purge. And that would actually add urgency to this heist and be their one big opportunity while the heroes are Ooh. gone or distracted or dead or whatever for us to actually pull this off in a limited amount of time. Does that make sense? Right. Uh, what if the point is, you know, to just, like, take all the, take everything superpowered out with them, right? Let's say, hypothetically, it's, like, just the superpowered, super, like, undead superheroes are, like, the big problem, right? The world is, like you said, it's the end of days. So they're thinking the only way we can do this is, I don't know, maybe there's some sort of a MacGuffin or device that will basically just instantly shut off anyone with superpowers, regardless, like, dead or alive. Oh, uh, okay, so that like, makes it like a heroic heist in that case, as your heroes are trying to save the world. Well, at least 
at least they, you see i'm trying to make it more like a spite still make it more like a spite thing like yes objectively they are doing the good they're doing a good thing even if that that thing kind of means death for them in either scenario but it's still like i i still want to frame it as more as, as more just like a spite thing rather than a, we're gonna be heroes nothing if that makes sense <laughs> okay um, so I guess, yeah, maybe just take a look at the motivations of your characters, because it feels like something is just often in, in terms of if the world is going to be destroyed, doing a heist doesn't matter, because you won't be able to spend or enjoy the results of doing the heist. Um, and so you'll either need to build a world where order will be restored, or it needs to be not a heist. Uh, and like, or, you know, it, it could be like, this is our opportunity to kill all the heroes. I'm kind of with you there. But then you'll just need to frame specifically how are they going to do that in the course of your movie. So I think this is mostly going to be a motivation and objective question. The whole concept of villains need to team up in a world where heroes have turned into, into zombies is cool on its own, though. So I think that you'll find something. All right. Thank you. I'm, thank you. Yeah. All right. Let's. Um, we're a little over time, but I'm going to continue with just a couple more. I may not be able to get to absolutely everyone. But I will just tell everyone that we are looking to finish your log lines this week. And you're going to be filling out your sketchbook as much as you can. So you want to finalize that log line. And if I'm not able to get to it, I'm glad to re reply via text in the Discord ch channels during the week and get you caught up. Or if you have a revised version of your log line, post that in the Future Boot Camp chat. I will give you extra feedback and you can get that in ship shape for next week. In the meantime, you're going to also fill out that sketchbook and you're going to read a pro script cover to cover, the entire thing, at least one. I want you to read three, but you can get away with one if you must by next week and be ready to answer, what did I read? And what did I think of it? Just basic questions like that. Okay, that's all for next time. This is going to be next week in the same class slot. Um, and so Fridays from 6 to 8 p.m. Pacific time for the rest of this session, so seven more weeks. Okay, I'm going to call on Joya if she's still here. And then I may have time for like, oh, we may have a question from Dan too actually, so I'll take Dan's question. Maybe he has a log line to share. If he does, then I'm glad to look at his and Joya's as our last two for today. Oh, um, hello? Hey, Joya. Hey. Yeah, well, I had put mine up, but then when you uh, put up, uh, what's her name, Shakira's, um, I guess my question there was, because I wasn't, what was showing on the screen was not what you were reading. So oh, then I started not? wondering, no, no, it, um, as far as the log line. So. You see this one here? This one's yours, right? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that one's mine. But I was okay. just wondering if I was... Yeah, this was uh, Shakira's perfect shot. We did that one. Okay, oh, let's okay. go into yours. All right. <laughs> yeah, because her story kind of interested me. I, I don't remember it from last week. Um, but, yeah, so I was like, I'm not seeing the same thing. Anyway, um, I was... Uh, my genre and comps, I'm not quite sure if they're on point or not. So, um, yeah. Yeah. That's I okay. Mean, why, I, don't, why don't you read the logline for us, Atlab? When God summons a humble shepherd sheep herder to kill his teenage son, he must tackle perilous peaks, wild animals, and a treacherous rainstorm to reach the summit in three days or else face divine wrath. Great. Um, I think, yeah, is the shepherd might just be a bit of an easier word than sheep herder. I think we all kind of get what this means. Um, oh. To kill his teenage son. I, I, not that it matters that much. I mean, I think sheep herder means the same thing. But um, to kill his teenage son, he must tackle perilous peaks, wild animals, and treacherous rainstorm to reach the summit in three days, or else face divine wrath. Okay. Yeah, this is great. I mean, this is pretty much just a straight adaptation of the Abraham story, it sounds like. You're framing Abraham as the hero or as the lead, so you're just going to have to, in a story sense, kind of justify what he's doing. Maybe you're going to have to show that meeting with God and show that he truly believes it, show that, you know, he is has this very strong internal battle 
um, that we're going to see illustrated externally over the course of these three days. I think this logline might be working fine. Let me just ask, what's his relationship like with his son? Oh, he, it's like, uh, he loves his son. He loves his son. He, um, he waited like a hundred years to get him. So this is probably, this is like the last thing he's trying to hear. Uh, the last thing he would want to do. Oh, okay. Um, so it's his yeah. beloved son. It's his son that he, they have a great relationship, you're saying? Yes. Okay. So, yes. yeah, I see what it is. I see the movie. Um, I like how you've kind of framed these three obstacles that run into. We have these three days that it'll take. I don't know if that's how the original story went, if it was three days or whatever, but that just works well for this. Um, I think you've got something here. Yeah, just uh, do if you can, just clarify that relationship between them. If like if that's going to be a big source of the conflict, if they're estranged or something, it's like a different story than if they have a great relationship at the beginning. So you can add in just a little bit about that. But beyond that, I think this is looking good. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. Thank you. My, um, I wasn't sure if my, um, my comps. Okay. So the first comp is the world that they're in. It's kind of that same Noah, uh, olden times world. Mm -hmm. And, um, the, I guess like the whole psychological part was buried or misery. I, I couldn't, uh, really think which way to go. Buried uh, seems like the wrong comp to me just because your movie is a surv wilderness survival kind of movie, it sounds like, and Buried is all taking place with one guy in a box with a phone, so there's not much in common between them besides the tone. Um, Misery, you can go with for now. I would just look for movies about people in the wilderness together going up against the kinds of obstacles that your characters are going to be going up against. Um, maybe like even The Revenant movies like... or something like that? Which one? The Revenant. Oh, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Is this historical or modern day? It's historical. It's historical. Okay, yeah, then I would... You can use historical movies as comps in that case. Um, you might look at mountain climbing movies, too. Things like K2 or Vertical Limit. Okay. Okay, let's see. There's just some okay. ideas for comps, but I think the idea is really solid. Okay. Thanks, Thank Joya. Thanks. Hold on. Oh, just hold on. I'll bring you back up. Sorry, I put you back in the audience. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, that's fine. I'm good now. <laughs> okay, I'll sounds good. It. Thank you, Joya. All right, we have Dan as our last. Is Dan still here? Dan, do you want to read your logline? Uh, sure. All right. I lost my place on it. Shoot. Did you okay, cut? I have it here. You can... All right, a historical to death. drama. Historical drama. Comps, Florence or Labria, and I don't know what else yet, but logline. When a Hittite soldier gets volunteered to deliberately get captured by the Egyptian army, he must convince the Egyptians that his false information is true to spare his life as that well as that of his fellow soldiers. Singular soldier or plural soldier? Uh, it should be soldiers is. I think I meant to do, but autocorrect and all that. His fellow soldiers, pr plural soldiers left. Okay. Um, let me... autocorrect. Okay. So when a Hittite soldier gets gets volunteered to get deliberately captured, just kind of two, get, two gets right in a row, just kind of made me trip a little bit reading this, gets volunteered. I suppose he is volunteered then. So he's forced into this job, you're saying? Yes. Okay. I, just, I just wanted to make it sound a little snappy, less like, you know what I mean? Voice. Right. I see what you mean. Okay, so de deliberately captured by the Egyptian Gets army. Gets volunteered to be com or to become a deliberate capture. Something like that. Become okay. a deliberate prisoner. He's sort of becoming a reluctant saboteur in a way, isn't he? Or is sort of becoming a... Yeah, this spy. Is, and this is based on really something that happened. Okay, so yeah, maybe, maybe if you can frame it in those terms, he becomes a reluctant... 
what do we call it? Maybe there's a better word than saboteur. Spy. Infiltrator? Yeah, something like that. Oh, it definitely, if I wanted to be a very a dire, uh, direct, it would be a false informant. Yeah, I think that can work. So this is espionage stuff, but in a, is this kind of a antiquity world that we're in here? Are you saying Hittites? I'm not actually sure. Exactly. Very. Go ahead. Very antiquity. People aren't even riding, horse, riding horses directly yet. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is quite ancient. There's there's still horses. They're just chariots. Everything is chariots. Okay. So um, he so a yeah when a describe your character with an adjective. So if we start with like, is he the last guy we'd ever expect to succeed at this job? If that's the case, then we want to know why. Is he scrawny? Is he weak? Is he cowardly? Why is he someone who has to be volunteered for this? Um, or maybe he has some spe special skill. Maybe he's very charismatic and he's good at tricking people and he's good at convincing people of stuff. Just describe your character a little bit. Um, he must convince them that his false information is true to spare his life as well as his fellow soldiers, meaning that the stakes are what exactly? That their arm the Egyptian army is about to like destroy their army. Like the Hittite or army. Yes. Just the army or their home itself? I get, well, I'm not, I haven't really thought that far ahead with this That's thing okay. that I yeah, just thought of. To... I really just wanted to tell a story in this time period. Okay, you don't have to know the answers now, but just be thinking the stakes are different if, the, uh, if, the, if they are, I need to protect my fellow soldiers versus I need to protect my home village or whatever it is that is just going to be motivating your character differently and also telling us what they're like uh what is the urgency behind their quest um so he has to convince them that the false information is true so i guess i would just ask what is the movie besides just a guy in a cage talking to his captors and that can you could potentially get a compelling movie out of that in like a sort of 12 angry men type setup but let me just ask did you have more in mind <sighs> At the, at the moment, I hadn't. Perhaps there's also cuts to the battle. There's actually a point where they learn that his information isn't true. So there's a, probably a daring escape. I would maybe ask, does he have we to take on reconnect some with of, his, oh, go ahead. Reconnect with his fellow, what? I just had a suggestion. I was thinking if he has to take on some kind of specific job for them, like, rather than just saying, hey, I'm a soldier for our side, I have some info for you. If, if it was more like he's like, I'm going to become your local guide, maybe then you could have a good excuse for him to have to get out of the cage and out of the prison and actually go around and, and do stuff. All right, that's an idea. Just a suggestion. You don't have to use that, but I would try to, if, if you want him actually going around doing stuff and not just being, and not just having a mostly be a movie about a guy being interrogated in a dungeon, then we should just have that sense of what kind of adventures is he going to be having? What is he going to be out and doing? Excuse me. All right. Any questions on this one? Oh, uh, no. I just need more time with it. Yeah, no problem. Than just literally. 10 minutes so far it's all good yeah you might want to clarify is this going to be because you say historical drama it might be sort of more sword and sandal well, adventure. I, would, I don't want to call it pop history because most people don't even know what the heck these who the heck these people are yeah exactly but i'm not exactly going to use the re a real name because the names of these of the of the spies that were cap that were deliberately said to be captured are forgotten sure even though this is the first ever battle that was super rec that had historical records and archiving by both sides gotcha okay so those are all very cool details and i hope this these notes have given you some ideas just how to shape the story a little bit maybe suggest what the primary action is going to be and what we're watching the character do and how we can just describe your character a little more and give us a bit of a sense of what's at stake here all right thank you for sharing hope that was helpful and that's going to bring us to the end of this feature boot camp class again your goal for next time finish and finalize that log line paste it in the feature boot camp chat by next week if you want to get that feedback or you can use the feedback channel if you are not a member and you should read a script from the blacklist and fill out that sketchbook as much as you can 
There's no right or wrong things to include in the sketchbook. It's just going to be all of your ideas all in one place. Try to have that log line totally finished this week. And uh, if you finish the script and you have a lot of time to spare, read another one and read more. We hope to see you guys soon. Remember, scriptcamp.net to sign up. You can sign up for unlimited by clicking enroll now on the main page. Get access to every single class and event that we do here, including our classes tomorrow, 10 to 12 tomorrow. We have pilot class. And then um, we have uh, these boot camps that will be persisting for the next eight weeks for feature, six weeks for TV, and we'll have novel starting in August. Thanks a lot, guys. We hope to see you guys soon at your next Script Camp class or events. Have a great rest of your day.